Hello there, it's Seth from Three Counties Motorhomes and welcome to this video guide on the facelift cab area for the Peugeot Boxer. This is typically going to be from vehicle ages around 2012 to late 2014, early 2015 before the new generation of cab was introduced. This particular vehicle is a 2013 vintage. So um, if you've had a previous Peugeot Boxer or Fiat or Citroen vehicle, then it's going to be remarkably familiar. Like I say, this is more of a facelift, uh, bringing a few of the features a little bit more in line with what's on the vehicles in the modern day. So in this guide, I'm going to just show you around, show you what the buttons and knobs are to do and uh, explain where everything is. So we're going to start off with the driver's door card and on this particular model we have your electric windows here and your electric mirror controls. The mirror control is basically a joystick but it also can be twisted into various positions. This 12 o'clock position with the pip is the neutral position which disables the control and then we have a high and a low position on either side and this is to select either the high or low mirror on your respective side and when selected you then use the joystick to adjust that particular mirror. This particular model, uh, or vehicle should I say, has a gasset um, underslung gas tank and that is the gas indicator. So this is not something that is standard to the vehicle. As is this item here, this is a third party alarm interface. Again, not standard equipment, will not be on every model. However, these controls here are, so we have here a set of buttons. These two buttons here are for raising or lowering your headlight angle. And then if you press the mode button and these buttons, you can play with a settings menu on the instrument cluster there, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. The steering column now, the right hand stalk is your wiper stalk. There is a trip computer cycling button on the end and the twist collar will adjust the intermittent interval. Over here we have your uh, vehicle lights. So the twist collar is going to set from off or daytime running lights where applicable and then on. And for main beam, we have flash as a pull towards, pull a little bit further past the stiffer detent position, and that will toggle the main beam on or off. And then, of course, we have indicators with nudge for lane changing. This particular model has the cruise control stalk below. To turn the cruise control on, we twist the collar from off to on. We then set the desired speed when we're at that speed by nudging down. That will then hold the vehicle at that speed. We can modify the speed with nudges or holds up or down and pause or resume the system with the push button on the end. On the steering wheel itself, the horn is pretty much a push in the lower centre of the wheel. And this model has mounted controls to either side for operating the entertainment unit and the hands-free functionality if you have a phone connected to the vehicle. Over in the central dashboard area, we have the entertainment unit here in the center. This is the standard unit. Below that, we have the ventilation controls, which includes the air conditioning button in this case. The outer dial is going to control, on the left side that is, is going to control temperature. The inner dial is your fan speed. The outer dial on the right is your fan position. And the inner will just select between recirculated or fresh air. Down the bottom here, we have a row of buttons. This one here is your mirror demist. We have rear fog light, hazard warning lights, and then lock or unlock the cab. Now these buttons can vary. Sometimes a fog light button can be found actually over here. Um, and that can often be in the case where you have additional driving assist buttons over here. If your vehicle happens to have those, there's a chance I've sent you an additional video guide that will have that there, or you can search our page here on YouTube for that applicable video guide about those driving assists. Now we have two 12 volt sockets here. This one uh, usually has a little blank on it. Uh, this one is disguised as a cigarette lighter. There may also be a cup here that was an ashtray. Um, but again, like I say, that could often be removed or uh, it's just sit there empty if you're a non-smoker, of course. Here we have the gear stick. This particular vehicle is a six speed manual. You can see that reverse is typically over to the left of first gear, but you do need to pull the collar up to access the reverse gate. If you have a comfort matic gearbox, I've done a separate video guide on that as well. So you will receive that. Or again, you can check our YouTube for that particular video guide. 
This generation still features the lockable central glove box. If you open it up, you'll see a USB indicator here. And if you have that, then if you were to look underneath, I'm just lowering the camera down, you can see there is a USB slot just in there, which will connect to the entertainment unit. So if you have a MP3 player or a mobile device that can transmit music, then that's a good way of connecting that up there. But it also charges devices, of course. There is an additional non-lockable glove box on the passenger side. Over here, we have a little compartment. This here does not lift up in this particular case. Now, sometimes this section can, which is a legacy feature of the previous generation of vehicle. This is going to be a clip, so you can hold paper and other things like that. Um, but yes, if yours doesn't lift up, then don't force it. Clipped to the legacy rear view mirror in this particular vehicle's case is a reversing camera monitor, but of course that could be different in your case. Otherwise, we have dome light controls, sun visors, and it's all pretty standard beyond that point. Now, if you have integrated blinds for your cab windows, either windscreen, side windows, or both, please be very gentle with those because they can break easily if you're a bit too heavy handed and they're incredibly expensive to replace. You have been warned. This vehicle does not. It instead has a curtain rail that blocks the light out at night also just so you're aware the vehicle battery is actually underneath the cab floor so that's something to be mindful of uh, with this vehicle again your underbonnet demonstration should highlight that as well it's not in with the engine it's underneath the cab floor steering wheel adjustment here so underneath the steering column reach under there is a lever here but unfortunately this is just going to allow you to adjust the height of the wheel at its set angle there is no rake adjustment it is purely height only but it's better than nothing and then of course once set you just need to push that lever back down into the locked position like so and you're good to go so i did promise to show you the trip computer or the settings menu from earlier using these buttons here so we'll do that now so i'm going to turn the vehicle ignition on and that's what it looks like when the ignition comes on you get an oil level check as well so the more pips you have the more oil you have which is obviously a good thing and then we have the trip computer information shown so we have the odometer in the center the temperature and the time at the bottom and at the top is our chosen trip computer so aca is average consumption for trip computer a there's trip computer A and B, so you can have two trip computers running. So average consumption A, um, I've accidentally just operated the wipers there. Uh, we have, um, I don't know what int consumption is, unfortunately, but you have to refer to your manual for that one. Average speed for A, um, travel time A, I'm just pressing, by the way, the trip computer button on the end of the stalk here to cycle these. Distance on trip computer B, average consumption B, average speed B, travel time B, and then the sort of main page or the central page is the date at the top uh, we then have range which is going to tell us our fuel range remaining we have then back to trip distance a and all the other trip computer information for a and b computers so that's the standard trip computer setup to access the settings menu i'm going to press mode now and once i've done that we see the word menu appear and using the up and down buttons next to the mode i can cycle through options so we have speed beep Trip B data, set time, set date, C radio, auto close, units, language, buzzer volume, button volume, service, passenger bag, and then exit menu. And if we press mode on that, that will take us back to the trip computer. Speed beep is exactly as it sounds. If I press the mode button to use as an enter or select button, I'm going to select that. And it's currently off. If I now set that to on and confirm that, then we can choose the speed. So let's just leave it at 80. And hey presto, it's done. But now we've turned the speed beep on. Underneath the speed beep menu now, we should get... Oh, it's changed on this one. Normally you do get the option to configure the speed separately but now they've okay so in this particular model they've left it as it was so in previous generations or maybe it's later generations i'm not sure but on another version of this computer when you turn the speed beep on you get a second option to go directly to changing the speed so if you do want to modify the speed the beep happens you do need to go back into the menu reconfirm on and then set your speed again accordingly for example like that Trip B data just chooses whether or not we have trip computer B on or off. So I'm going to turn that off now. And that means we'll see no trip computer B data on the trip computer pages itself. Set time is straightforward, but allows us to set the time. Same for setting the date. C radio, 
um, is on or off, and that, I believe, allows us to be able to see the radio as, well, actually, I don't know, I'm going to be guessing. Um, I'm assuming that means we see something to do with the radio in the central display here. Uh, auto close, if we choose that, that means when we start moving, the vehicle is going to lock the doors. We can turn that on or off. And then units, that's going to be obviously miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Language should be self-explanatory. Buzzer volume is just the uh, buzzer for any vehicle alerts. Button volume, I believe, is the same for what I'm doing now, pressing different buttons and things and how loud that is. Service, if we press mode on that, we're going to be able to see um, when the next service is due in miles. Uh, and passenger bag, this allows us to enable or disable the passenger airbag. Passenger airbag is currently on. If you do disable it, then that should, if you have, some vehicles will have a passenger airbag warning light on this strip here. And in that instance, that will illuminate that um there's a confirm option to do that uh yeah that will illuminate the warning light if you have one applicable this vehicle uh itself does not i'm going to re-enable the passenger bag though in this case you turn it to on and confirm and that ultimately um is essentially it an exit menu will take us back out the menu back to the trip computer and that's how you use the menu to the side just here using the mode button so there we go that about wraps up the video for the cab area of a facelift uh, pre-2015 Peugeot Boxer vehicle I'm Sev I hope this video has been useful for you and thank you very much for watching